Hi, this is my old school Iron Man account, Hand Pancakes. And he, my friends, is in dire need of a thumbnail, so let's get right into the process of making it really quickly. Uh, hello. Um, I wanted to do just a quick video on how I make my thumbnails and things. Um, and my intro videos, but the intro videos are a little more in-depth. Uh, so I ha I got my method from a guy on YouTube named The Skulled. I'll leave the link to his channel in his description in uh, the description. And it really helped me. So what I use, I use a plugin in Roomlight called Model Exporter. So Model Exporter. So if you look up Model in the plugin hub, just up here, the cog, at the very bottom of your plugins, it'll be Plugin Hub. And then you look up Model. Uh, you can see this is called Model Exporter by Bram91. Now you take it, you hit Configure, and just make sure it's got that export color, and then you'll be ready to go. Alright, now what you're going to do, you're going to notice whenever you click on things in game, it's the same options, but if you shift and right click on them at the very bottom, it'll have something that says export model and then whatever the model is. Alright, so say that I wanted to do maybe a video on the Corp Beast here, so I'm going to take it, I'm going to right click, export the model, just once or twice, depending on which animation I'd like to get, uh, and I'm just going to let it kill me. And I'm just going to do a very simple one with Corp Beast and then me. Uh, and the way to export your own player model is to just take, right click, or right shift click your inventory and then export player model. Alright, and once you're done with that, you're going to open up your Runelight folder. So an easy way to do that is to just go up here, right click this little screenshot icon at the top of Runelight, and then open screenshot folder. Uh, and let me drag it in. And then go to dot runelight and then right here in models is where it's going to be and it's sorted by date so these two or these six files up here are the models that i've most recently exported so this here is the court beast and then this here is me and not everything can be exported very easily so just remember that as well now if you try opening the model what you're probably going to see is just a blank gray little thing like this this was the one that i exported out of my player uh, and this isn't exactly what we'd like, so, but don't worry, that's it, it's going to fix itself whenever we go in and edit it. Alright, now what I've got here is a new Blender file. Blender is a free-to-use 3D modeling program. You can find it online. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take it, I'm going to just start a new general file. And what you'll see is a 3D cube, a light source up here, and then a camera. Now, we can see what the camera sees by hitting zero on our numpad. And this is all that the camera is going to see. So if I went and I exported this right now, all I would get is this blank gray cube in this kind of evenly lit room. So what I'd like to do to start is I'd like to select the camera and I'd just like to reset its position. So over here on the right side, you'll see these menus. Go down to this one with the square with the corner kind of things around it. And then just set the location to zero for all of it set your rotation to zero and then for your rotation x i like to start it at 90 because see it starts at a straight so now it's just straight and in the direct center and then we're going to get rid of this cube by selecting it and then hitting delete on our keyboard now another another good thing to do uh we're going to take our camera and we're just going to set it back and what you can do there's two ways you can do this you can click over here towards the top left down here this transform key and you can drag it back and then up manually and that works just fine because see now it's up instead of just down there or alternatively you can just take it and you can type the location you'd like it to be in so if I wanted it to be maybe like five meters back ten meters back I can just type it up there as well and we're gonna do the same thing with this light we're just gonna set it so that it is just in the center and we're gonna move it up now this next part starts to get a little weird, but it's not that bad. So we're going to go to File, and then Import, and we're going to import our OBJ here. It's that third to last option. We're going to navigate back to our Runelight folder. So if you don't know how to get there, just go to your C drive, probably. You're going to go to your Users folder, and then whatever your user is, I have Bren here. And then somewhere there's going to be a dot .Runelight. Just find that, and then you're going to look through it until you find models mine is at the very top since it was the most recently modified 
open it and then you're going to click see these are the three objects that i have i'm going to import just one of them for now we're just going to start with the corp beast here we're going to click it just the obj not this mtl file and we're going to click import obj and there it is it's rather large uh so what you need to do you need to have it selected you need to have transform selected over here and you need to click s and you see it brings the slider in and if we slide it down it'll make it smaller which is exactly what we'd like so just slide it down and then left click until it looks like it it's an appropriate size and we're we're going to do that same thing with our character model we're going to go back import obj and i would make sure to favorite that folder i've got it bookmarked right here um and we're just going to take that for my character as well and see he was all gray just a minute ago but now he's the right colors and everything we're just going to scale him down as well there he goes and what i'd like to do just select the corp beast or whatever I'm gonna move him back maybe move my guy back towards the camera uh so that way it's a little more appropriate now we've got this and you might be wondering what this looks like right now well there's two ways you can tell uh and the way that i prefer is take up here at the top right see how it lets you see the different shading options just up in the corner you can click and drag and it opens a second window and what I do in the second window is I click to see what the finished rendered product looks like. And then while I have this window selected, I hit zero. So this shows me how the shading looks and what the camera sees. So if I move the camera up and down in real time, it shows me what the changes are going to look like. Now, obviously this isn't how I'd like my image to look. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the corp beast, just move him back, scale him up a bit, you know, just make him look nice, just however I'd like. Maybe I want it just like that. Then, see these little circular things around it? The little arrows will move it back and forth along the axes. These circle things will rotate them around. So maybe I'd like him rotated so you can see him a bit better, just like that. We're gonna do the same with my guy over here. We're gonna have him maybe just looking at the corp beast, make him a bit bigger. So you can see them better. So that is essentially my scene. What we can do, we can take this light up here. And then if we go to the right here by the transform, down to this light bulb looking one, click it. You can change the color of the light that's coming from it. So maybe I'd like it to be, I don't know, red or something. Yeah, we'll do like this red kind of color. So that changes it to the red. Make sure your light's selected. Power will make it so that it is more or less light on them. So at zero power, it's very dark. But if we have it up at 500 maybe, it kind of casts this glow on them. And there's different light modes too that are fun to mess around with. Sun, it's basically absolutely blinding light, which I can't use. Spotlights, uh, see it spawns like a little cone that you can point at things. Maybe I just want things lit up a certain way. Then area, it's like spot except a little more even but I'm just gonna keep it on point for now because this looks fine now one of the last things we're gonna do here because this I said this we're gonna keep the scene very simple we're gonna change the background because right now it has this ugly gray background now there's a couple ways you can do this and the easiest one is if you go here into world properties this little globe and then it's gonna have surface background you can set your color to just be pure black or whatever you'd like See, this looks very dramatic here. And uh, you can change it to whatever, like if you'd like it to be pure blinding white, or maybe you'd like it to be kind of a yellow color. You can do that too. It's all up to you. But I'm just going to set mine to black. And I don't really like how this red light is, so I'm going to move it forward some so that they cast some more shadows on themselves. And then I'm going to change the color as well. Probably to just more of a neutral color. I didn't really like how the red ended up looking. And this is about it. Now, what I prefer to do, I like my render engine to be Eevee um, because all of these render engines will give you different interactions with your light and they'll give you different things that you have to do in order to export it a certain way. So I've just used Eevee in the past. I enjoy it. There's nothing wrong with any of them. Um, I'm not good enough to tell you about all of the different rendering options. 
So that's not something that I feel like I should be telling you today. But to render it, what we're going to do, we're going to go up to this top part right here by file. We're going to hit render and then render image. And it's going to take a few seconds, unless yours is simple like mine, and it'll give you your finished image here. Now, it looks a little low quality, but trust me, it'll be fine. Just click image and then save. Save it to wherever you'd like, maybe like test image. Then just save it as an image. And up here, you can change the compression. I don't want mine compressed at all, so I'd like mine... I like exporting mine as PNGs um, with zero compression and as much color depth as I can get. Then just save it as an image. And this is the image that it output onto my desktop. So you can see it's still got that geometry like it's an old school RuneScape, but I don't know. There's just a certain charm to it. So that is basically the workflow for how I make all of my thumbnails. So. Uh, some more examples I can give. I'll just save this one as tutorial. The more examples I can give, I have some... So this this was the thumbnail from episode 6 uh, that I ended up with. Um, and see, it's just a lot of these different objects here. And then not all of them are in frame all the way. So even though this is what the finished thumbnail ended up looking like, you didn't see this kind of amalgamation of um, a mascot and one of the wardens. You didn't see the bottom of these pots or the fact that this little honk kind of symbol here is actually just the exit crystal or teleport crystal with these skulls and like this big gray pyramid on the bottom of it. You don't have to see any of that. Remember, it's only what this camera here sees. Or here's like another example. This was my crafting video I had done and it's just the camera and then some some of the Tazar gem shops, a couple of the crates that I have stacked places, one of the Tazar and me, then a light and the text and that's it. Now how to get the text to glow and everything, that's another story. Uh, oh and this plane here. Uh, and to make those, those are pretty easy. So if I just had wanted to do a plane, I would hit shift and A and then mesh plane drag it down to, so it's that on the floor, then hit S to scale it up a bunch so that it covers everything you need it to, and then over here at the bottom here where this little circle is, you hit new materials, and then you can change the base color of it to whatever you'd like it to be. Uh, you can make it metallic and things, also something I don't want to get into because it's not something I know well enough. That is essentially how I did it. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed and that this was you were able to get something out of this, uh, just so you understand my process. Um, there's a lot more that you can learn. I spent about a month trying to learn all of it. Um, but it is very interesting what you get into it, uh, with these little animations and things. Like, I, I, I just want you all to know, I did not create this. I did not sit there and create frame by frame these animations, because I'm not that good yet. But I did everything else. I made the camera shake. I watch the tutorial on how to make this creepy freaking background. I still don't know why I chose that. I did the floor and everything. So there's a lot that you can get into uh, and I hope that this has sparked your interest. Uh, if there is more interest too, I can go more in depth on the process of how I do things like this or how I composited like the intro for my series. Uh, and I will be more than happy to share all of that.